Cintia França is an artist, poet, and author of a Brazilian book of poetry titled Poetic Treasure, published in 2003. She worked in the marketing area in Brazil, and from the stories I have heard, uh, was highly creative and innovative in getting people in her company moving and motivated to engage in things like theater and uh, 5K races. She arrived in the US three years ago. Although it was a cold winter, she hit the ground running and she has been engaging in learning new things like English here. Yeah, I guess English? English here. <laughs> Only three years ago. And painting and has exhibited her paintings and given artist talks and poetry readings and storytelling as well. Most recently, she has been the visionary for the Hopkinton 300th Poetry Anthology, multi-generational book of 36 contributors between the ages of eight to 103 that got started in March and the books were published by Damianos Publishing in October. And the book launch was attended in November by over 100. I am delighted to introduce to you Sincha Franza. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> um, I did this presentation sharing my dreams um, all my life. I, I'm a, I, I have a lot of dreams in my life. And, um, and my way of life is cultivating creative life forces for family, for work, for art, and for community. So the presentation is called Dreams. I started with my poetic treasure in my book that I published in Brazil in Portuguese. Uh, it's a dream, it's a personal project, the poetry book that I did. I was pregnant after my, my first son born. I did, a, I, like, oh, I, have, I think, I, I can do a poetry book. I can I write something now. I'm in home now, I can, can write a little bit uh, poetry. And I did my first, this is a personal project, I did my first poetry book called Poetic Treasury. And I, I brought three poems today to read to you is in Portuguese and in English. I translate, of course. And uh, I will read first The Passenger, Passageiro, in Portuguese. And this poem is about how I see the life, how I feel the life. And this is a way you cross with people in our way. So this is about passenger, passageiro. I read first in Portuguese. Passageiro. Na vida somos passageiros. Da vida, pega-se um único trem. Chega um momento em que decidimos abrir a cortina e percebemos o grande número de trens que correm paralelos, em universos distintos, de vidas que correm paralelas às nossas. Os trens variam de modelo e tamanho, mas as cortinas permanecem fechadas, como se os passageiros de uma dimensão temessem o um cruzamento de atmosferas, só que é inevitável. Os olhos são faróis deslumbrados com o brilho de novas viagens e cada ser humano é uma viagem muito particular. Se contarmos os trens, os vagões, os assentos e os homens, estaremos perdidos numa teia de relacionamentos. E é nessa teia, aparentemente confusa, que se encontram as imagens comuns, pessoas que partiram da mesma viagem interior e que têm como essência comum o pôr do sol na mesma tonalidade, um passageiro do tempo. Now I read in English. <laughs> it's easy for everyone. And uh, this poem, Passenger, was my first poem that I, I read here in Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. So I, be, I began with him, with this poem because that, because it's very important. It's, it's really uh, hard. You speak other language. I live here uh, three years now. And uh, I learned to speak English here. So, sorry about the accent sometimes. And uh, I read now passenger. In life, we are passengers. In life, you take a single train. There comes a time when we decide to open the curtain and realize the large number of trains that run parallel in different universes, or the lives that run parallel to ours. Trains vary from model and size, but the curtains remain closed. As the passenger of a dimension, Fury's crossing atmospheres. It's just inevitable. The eyes are dazzled headlights with the lust of new trips. 
and every human being is a very special trip. If you count the trains, wagons, seats and men, we will be lost in a web of relationships. And is that web, apparently confused, which are common stock, people who share the same inner journey, and they have a common essence, the sunset, in the same shade, a passage of time. Now, the second poem is A Ilha Humana, The Human Island. Uh, it's a short poem. It's about, again, talk about our life. And uh, I, I'm not reading the mosaic of the songs, mo mosaic of dreams, because I think I don't have time for read the three. So I read the second one in Portuguese, the short one, A Ilha Humana. <coughs> Quem se isola é uma ilha. Quem se busca, um arquipélago. Quem se encontra, um continente humano. The Human Island. Who isolates oneself is an island. Who seeks oneself, an archipelago. Who meets oneself, an human continent. So January 2013, uh, I moved with my family to United States. My husband uh, works in an American company. And you saw an opportunity for our sons, because I have two stepsons and one son, to study here and opportunity to learn about other culture. And this picture I, I, I took when I moved here, exactly January 2013. I have two rainbows, my poetry, the, after the, my presentation, you see one poetry that talk about design. And uh, I took this picture because I love this town. I was looking for good towns with, with good schools. And I, I started looking for places in Brazil yet, when I was thinking about move. And my husband transferred his job for here. And the boy's coming. Everyone's very well now. Thanks, God. And uh, this moving experience, experience talk about my life here. This is uh, some work that I did in painting. Uh, I just put a slide, one slide about painting because I have many poetry here and many poems here. So this is my, I'm a beginner, okay? I started in September 2013 to paint here. So my, I'm a beginner. I did oil painting in Hopton Center for the Arts. And this is two exhibitions in, in December 2013 and January 2015. This, this painting here is called Colors of Autumn, the first one that I did, that I paint, oil paint in the, in the bottom, right bottom. It's, uh, it's fall here. Brazil don't have the season so clear like here. So it's like not 70, almost the full year. So <laughs> here you can feel the difference between the weather and everything is different. So Colors of Health represents the month that I moved here. I, mo I moved in October, the end of October 2012 and moved to Hopton. I live in Marlboro two months and one month and some days and uh, in half. And I changed for Hopton in January 2013. This is my painting. I'm a super expert painter. I'm a beginner, I'm kidding. So um, I had an experience here in my life when I'm moving. Um, I shared this story, this story in the um, office space. Now we have a bittersweet space, amazing space for storytelling here in town. And uh, I did my first presentation because I pushed myself. It's hard sometimes to have to speak in English. You tell your life you have, it's, it's hard. But uh, I push myself because for me it's important. It's like you have to innovate yourself, you innovate your life. And I did this presentation, I did this big box for the storyteller talk, and uh, talk about moving, about my moving here. Uh, about the challenges when you have to move your life, because it's a, I'm a businesswoman, like a, a manager, marketing manager, work a lot, many hours a day, and then I move here with family, because you have uh, a dream. Because when you have a family, the dream is your dream and dream of a family. So I decided to go, it's my choice, a choice for, for my family, for the better for my family. And uh, and did this presentation talk about moving about the challenge, and I use during the presentation I turn the, the box and and show the fragile, because big change small change always you have to be ready to reinvent yourself. So how you feel fragile and you change your life like that. And then I turn around the, the box again and talk about, it's okay, it's a little clear now, it's this side up. Because after the fragile moment, like winter, uh, different culture, different language, uh, everything was different. Different measurements, because you have yard, you have <laughs> feet. <laughs> In Brazil, you have meters, centimeters, millimeters, uh, meters. Uh, it's totally different. 
And this side job is the moment when I decide to um, immerse in this culture and decide to learn with this change. Because change is not, not easy, but I decide to change my life. I decide to accept the challenge and live the other way, innovate myself, be innovative. And uh, I connect with my, the thing that I love in Brazil, because I work with communication, marketing, and, and poetry a long time. And um, when I put this side up, when I turn the box and say this side up, is the moment when I connect with the things that I love, like a run. I run all my life. Uh, I started the running club in my company. And, um, and now 80% of people run there. And uh, it's a big challenge for people. It's good for life. And I start this side job as I connect with, with plays here. With, um, I start the theater company there, the second group of theater there, talk about concepts of innovation in job. And uh, every year you have to, to put our goals for the, for the employees there. And I say, why, why you cannot say, you can do something different. And I you start to do plays to, to put people to understand the concepts of innovation. And it's very good because the, the organization environment was much better after that. So here I decide to run, near I decide to start poetry, near and here I decide to change my life. And, I, I, and after that, after turn the, the box again, I say, the change is our best gift. Keep moving, you have to keep moving all the time. So I start to talk about, because I don't have time to talk about all the art, so I will read my first poem that I, I think in English. Uh, all the time I, I, I think in Portuguese and then I translate. I think it's usual. And, uh, but this poem is the first time that I think in English and put the words in, in English on paper, on paper. I was trying to do Hopton, uh, Boston Marathon this year, 2015. And I tried the lottery in my running club. I try, I, it's a raising money so hard. I don't, I don't qualify for, for Boston Marathon. It's very hard for my age group. It's very hard for everyone, I think. And, um, and I decide to go to the lottery. I have a hope, I go to the lottery, I, that's okay. And uh, my friends are supporting me there, like, yeah, you can do it, like, yes. I was training, it's my, okay. I lost. Okay, and after that, I was very emotional after the lottery because I had a lot of hope. I wrote my first poem in English called The Way, A Conversation With Yourself. Wrong way, stop. Listen to your heart and your soul with kindness and balance. Forget the previous maps. Breathe deeply and choose your way again. Go. Try to keep your pace on the downhills and on the uphills. I'm running the long downhill now with my feelings. But life is a big, wonderful way for your dreams. Can you see the horizon? Can you see your dream? Clear and strong? Not yet. It's blurry. Be calm, you see. You are going the right way. Don't choose shortcuts. Just keep going. And I looked around me. I saw magical landscapes. Green leaves change your colors for red and gold. Trees trying to touch the sun. And the sun holds the trees with shine and power. I watched the life growing up around me. I thought about the beginning of everything. I remember each step, each accomplishment, each victory. Never was I alone on my way. I had my friends all the time. Sometimes they were changing these routes for stay, to stay with me. Other times I was changing my routes to stay with them. It wasn't anymore my map or their map, but ours. We are sharing the way. And I saw my dream so clear and full of colors that I could touch. And I did my sprint with the soul filled of joy and I crossed the horizon. Finish line? No, this is only the beginning. And it's very emotional, I dedicate to my friends, they are, they are there, uh, cheering for me, I dedicate this poetry for them. Hands dancing. This is, a, this is a new poem that I wrote in January this year. And uh, this paint is from my friend Liz Ricketson. I call her Liz, Elizabeth Ricketson, I call her Liz. Uh, 
She did a, a delicate surgery uh, in the beginning this, of this year in her hand. She was very worried about paint again and because it, it's her job. And uh, feeling her emotion, I wrote this poem. It's called Hands Dancing. She Hands Dancing. She paused for a moment. She was nervous. Suddenly, the dance floor seemed empty. She could hear her fears clearly locked in acrylic paint tubs. On the right side of the room, entered her partner, dancing with steps of grace and charm. Multicolored brush strokes filled the blank canvas and created the entire background of the painting. Those were the steps of an experienced dancer. The dance floor seemed now the landscape of a dream. She watched him carefully. She was not afraid. The paints dove into her imagination and the brushes began to spin. She wanted to be part of that dance. And he came to meet her, gave her his hand and asked her to dance. That was an irresistible invitation. She began to improvise steps, feeling new paths leading, leading to words far beyond the borders of the frame. He led her during the dance with the experience of a professional dancer, but with the percep perception of that we are all learners of life. Innovation, experience. Her left hand, his right hand. Together, the creation of a new dimension of, to the abstract. Hands dancing, always be able to fly. Okay. Oh, sorry. This is um, this painting is the first paint paint she did after the surgery in January, the end of January. This project's amazing project. I don't know. If, I think some people here know this project is um, poetry on the trail. Uh, I wanted to be part of that. Uh, Sherry Polly uh, invite the the, po the writers. The po okay, <laughs> Sherry, the time is going. Okay. <laughs> And, uh, and I share one poetry about the sculpture. The idea is put the art on the trail in Hopton Center trail. And uh, the poets were invited to, to write about that. I, I wrote a poetry about all the sculptures there. And my vision was uh, no talk about one or other sculpture, but talk about the perception of the sculpture on the, watch the walkers there. No walkers and the sculpture, but sculpture watching the walkers. It's a long poem because I talk about all the, the, the sculptures, but I will read the beginning and the end of the poetry, called Perceptions. Uh, and the beginning of the poem, I have Alton Alimb, um, a piece of, from Kate, by Kate Howey, and I have Sky Warrior by Virginia Fitzgerald, and I have Michael Fund. It's the three pieces that I talk about now, because I don't have time. Uh, perceptions. When you cross this trail, you are not alone. An invisible gate is open for two guardians. Looking up on your left, a colorful house is waiting for you out on a limb. There's something interesting about this house. It's not like the others. Its architecture escapes the obvious. Your eye address is unusual, the top of a tree, an insider's view of all who cross the gate. Its colors are of such intensity they invite the eye forever. How many times, how many times you have lost the opportunity to know the value of a human being, however different they seem at first sight? A new look at the world means a new look of, at ourselves and each other. We all like that house, special. The Sky Warrior is up on your right, giving you her pure crystal heart. When the sun's light passes through the dress, the Oreo dance with the, the, with the wind. We can feel the warm hug on the air as a breeze. You are welcome here. This is the beginning of the poetry, and the end is talk about the piece of Michael Ophan, Wired, and talk about my perception about the sculptures, about the trail. We are watching you, briefing with you. We are all connected. Human profiles in multiple directions. We are all wired, like a human natural, but unique human beings. We are the mirror of your feelings in art form. We are all perceptions, sculpture perceptions. Us, alive symbiosis. And
These are some pictures of the trail. It's a big group there. It's amazing. In September 2015. And Hopton True Poetry celebrated 300 years Hopton, Massachusetts. How is the time, Cheryl? Ooh, we have about uh, three seconds. Four, three or four more OK, thank you. Um, this project is uh, my big dream. Uh, November last year, I talked with Cheryl my idea to write a book and dedicate to Hopton. Because um, after you, you listen to listen my story, my story here, it's uh, I was very welcome in this community. I was very excited about this community, and I was thinking to dedicate something to the town. And I share with Cheryl, uh, you can do this a poetry book dedicated to to town, and it's a time for the Hopton 300 anniversary this year. And you together were the coordinate, coordinators of this project called Hopton True Poetry <coughs> Anthology Project. And we invite the community to have 36 amazing writers here in this project. And you did a book launch, like Cheryl said. This is our web website. And uh, now I put the bottom, buy now the book, now you can buy by our website. And, um, and put the name of the writers here in the website too. They are the writers here. And uh, photos and pictures, uh, HKN TV, thank you HKN TV, I have the link for HKN TV, you have full program there, all the program, and Hop News too. And the books are available also at Waterfresh Farm, you put a, a display a stand there to sell the books. And this poem is the sign that I wrote there. But before I have to thank you everyone to participate of this project, I have some of the writers here, I'm so glad, I'm so happy for everyone who participates of this project. And this is the poem that I, I, I read there, and this poem that means my life here. It's like a cycle. So I read for finish my presentation, because my time is gone. Um, the sign. As a passenger of life, the changes are inevitable. Small changes, big changes. We need to be read to reinvent ourselves and see the world with a new perspective. Be resilient and keep moving. When Hopton became my home, it was winter 2013. Cold weather, different culture, other language, measurements to learn. Against the winter and snowstorms, a special neighbor came to my home. Gift bag, beautiful card, delicious pumpkin bread, and a window candle. Welcome to the neighborhood, she said. Warm hug, a smile, special neighbors, no more boundaries. I've learned with my new beginnings, Hopton Running Club, where I met my best friends in the town, Tuesdays runs, brunches and loves, Saturday runs, 5K, half marathons, marathons, relays, teamwork, friendship. We are sharing the way. In Hopton Center for the Arts, my path become colorful landscapes, words in brushes, shades of joy, Paint is a different way of communication of the colors that come from your heart. We are blossoming and growing in life. In Hopkinton, the poetry flows naturally. Naturally, as a soft breeze, the town is very inspiring. When you are ready to wake up and smell the poetry, the art gives meaning and inspiration about life. In my early days in Hopton, I remember the first thing that I saw in town when I moved from Brazil. It was Christmas season. And there were two red rainbows. The sign said everything since the beginning. Welcome to Hopkinton. It's true, I can feel. Hopton is a gift. We are all welcome here. And I finished my presentation with the poem from Fernando Pessoa. He's a poet from Portugal. And they call Travessia Crossing. There comes a time when it's necessary to abandon the used clothes that already have the shape of your body and forget the paths that always take us to the same places. It's the time for the crossing, because if you don't dare to, we shall have stayed forever at the edge of ourselves. Thank you, thank you. <laughs>"'These new gas pipelines are really getting under my skin,' says our dear Earth Mother with a very sad grin. "'A knife slides through to let the pipeline in, then gas is pushed within, under my skin. 
The gas gets pushed through to you for heat and cooking and hot showers too. My body is stretched, my body is strained, I'm already in pain. Electrical wires pinch, black pavement scorch, iron tracks weigh heavy for trains. I'm already in pain. Adding more gas pipelines, you must be insane. My skin divides the deep earth below from the sky above. It's where I grow what is needed to keep you alive. My skin is your protection. This is the direction, the correction needed, not this deception. All these new gas pipelines are getting under my skin, says our dear earth mother with a very sad grin. The earth turns and we lean out, gathering to ourselves a little more light each day. Yes, it is true that shadow and light walk side by side, bowing their heads together in intimate conversation. But because the world turns, the darkest days must come. And the long nights will spill across the floor like water. And yet, there will always be that subtle shift, a pivotal moment, when we know that the deepest dark is done and the longest night is over. When we sense something luminous, something clear and unmistakable, the fulfillment of a promise that grows stronger in regular and trustworthy increments. Thank you. and pear apricot then there